Welcome to Conversations. I'm Bill Crystal. Very pleased to be joined again today by my old friend, Mike Murphy. I think we did this about a year ago. and We did. We I did. haven't bothered to look at it to see how it stands up, but we'll, we'll forget about that. <laughs> yeah, I've we'll been just, afraid to. Yeah. Going forward, let's, we'll discuss the state yeah. of politics. Mike, a veteran, ran presidential campaigns, Senate gubernatorial campaigns, congressional, everything. Uh, I started of, with Hoover. I'm that old. Yeah, yeah you I've are. been at no, it a while. No, you're one of the best. and. Uh, fantastic McCain campaign of 2000 mm. I still have such fond memories of and a different era it was isn't it amazing yeah, right? yeah honor and you now first. teach at USC a little bit and still do corporate and political I, stuff I helped this I don't teach uh, I might but right now I just help a little at the USC Center for the political future which has a lot of cool programming online you can check out good and I'm of course now I'm reaching out to the kids on the interweb bill with this really? old pod talking thing yeah yeah I hear they like that whatever that pod thing is yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. how does that work it, yeah you know I'm in magic is that like radio I it's like know. radio <laughs> but there's no antenna it's complicated but anyway, you have an excellent podcast with our friend David Axelrod, also who's also been a guest on Conversations, sure. called Hacks, appropriately and correctly called Hacks on Tap. The theory was, I'll give you the one minute plug okay. here. Why not? Then you sure, don't have to pay know. me the usual $100 uh, for this, but happy to be here uh, as always. Uh, Axe and I have been friends for a long, long time, good personal friends, even though we're, you know, we disagree on everything. We used to even run a lot of campaigns against each other. We, we had the Iowa Cup, or we, the governorship, back and forth, among other places. And we would, we would always get on the phone and talk politics. And Axe had the idea, I give him full credit, he said, why don't we turn this into a podcast? So it's basically like a bar conversation of two grumpy old white guys who've done a lot in campaigns and have opinions about what's going on now. So it's, it's been a good success. We have a growing audience, yeah. and people seem to like it. No, it's excellent. And you guys actually know a lot about actually about running campaigns, which distinguishes you from 95% of the people <laughs> who talk about running campaigns well, well, on funny. cable television. You know? Part of it is when you're in the cable, what, what should I say, the, cable, the racket uh, <laughs> that we both yeah. are, it's a little frustrating because in 30 seconds, then, you know, Miss Utah or some guy you've never heard of wants to interrupt with the, the College of Electricity or something. You know, <laughs> yeah, right. And you can't really. So the podcast, for good or bad, and some of our viewer mail argues each way, we get to bloviate on with our opinions. And, you know, we do about 45, 50 minutes a week going through it and viewer questions. So. But you it's always fun. have been, I think. I will say this honestly, much more imaginative and seen around corners in terms of where campaigns could go, less conventional. So let's talk about the current state of things. It's December, what is it, December 11th, I think we're yeah, talking here, December 2019. Um, mm -hmm. Day just, one of the impeachment articles have right. been passed out. But the Democratic campaign? Uh, I mean, what's, yeah. what surprised you? I mean, if we, we, you know, in some ways I'd say, don't you think it's been a little less Fewer surprises than normal yeah, in these I would kinds say, of cases? I would say no lightning bolts. Um, my score, I mean, it was easy to see Biden would get in trouble. He was a very weak front runner. Uh, so that wasn't a surprise. We'll see how it ends. Are um, you surprised that he remains a, pretty, well, I think a real the, front runner, though? Yeah, maybe the work through them all. Um, Biden has been, uh, the, the term of art right now is durable. But part of the problem is a lot of the punditocracy make their, create their opinions about what's going to happen based on the daily poll, which is a snapshot of what was on cable TV news last week, the right. national polling. And Biden has been robust in the national polling because he has that name ID advantage. He also has a good connection with African American voters and a lot of name ID, which kind of held things together so far for him in South Carolina. I think the threat to Biden's campaign is he is perceived as uh, the Trump beater, the winner. And if he comes in second or third in the Iowa caucus and loses the New Hampshire primary, both of which are by no means certain, but most of the polling for Biden has been a story of kind of decline the plateau in the first tier, but never quite leading it. There's been a little life lately. Um, but if he starts losing and Superman can't lift up a locomotive, I think whoever beats him could roll the table into South Carolina. So a lot of the talk about Biden's power has been based on polling of places where it's not that competitive yet. If you so look you at still Iowa buy and the New Hampshire, kind of, he has declined. You still buy the argument, which I, we've discussed this for years, and you've always been, I think, on this side of the, do national polls matter, or is it a sequential process where what happens in Iowa and New Hampshire is just yeah. close uh, to decisive? They matter because they tell you kind of who's winning the chatter among people who are paying attention now. A lot of primary voters out there are real lives. But I believe in the old Milt Wurtzman rule. It was an old McGovern delegate counter out of the Kennedy world who said, you know, be extremely wary of national polls until after the first voting contest. So I believe that is fundamentally true. You know, there's just a psychological need to look at the polls and relax because you think you know what's going to happen. 
And in primary politics in particular, that is dangerous because numbers can move fast. There has been And the sequence matters a huge a lot, amount. I a mean, lot, because you a, win an Iowa caucus, you get a couple hundred million dollars of media attention. That is a big deal. So I, I would say the state polls have been indicative, and they've, they've had a pretty simple story. Biden started with a lot of name ID and affection. Because keep in mind, the voters in the Democratic Party don't have to hate Joe Biden. They just have to decide are they going to give him the job or a gold watch. Right. You know, and so that that is being litigated now. But if you look at Iowa and the caucus, again, with another huge caveat that a caucus is trickier to poll because of the way the multiple ballots work and how open it is in the organizational part. But taking that aside, we do know who a lot of the caucus goers are. It is possible to poll them and kind of know who they like. And if you look at from the beginning, two things have really happened on, in Iowa, which is Biden has declined. He hasn't collapsed, but he's declined as competition shows up. And Elizabeth Warren has risen, and Pete Buttigieg has risen, which tells us they both have a pitch that's resonating. Now, we're going to have a tough January where that is sorted out. You saw we had the classic Democrat slappy fight between Warren and Buttigieg, where they each kind of like flailed away, and then they both surrendered. It was a okay. defining Democrat. Okay, I'll tell you my McKinsey clients. Oh, I'll tell you my law clients. Ooh, real brutal. Yeah. Brutal exchange Could there. Does issues possibly matter to anyone? No, it's process. Nobody cares. But they, they, they both look at the other as the problem. So they're trying to find a right. way to wound them without being called in the you know Democrat Tea Party being called me. It's amusing to watch. But fact is, those two have had energy. Warren a little earlier, then she plateaued on the second look. But she has an organization. She's a pretty strong candidate of the left. I, I don't really count her out yet at all. And Buttigieg has done a great job of getting everybody in the Democratic Party who had over 1,100 on their SATs together to give them 1,000 bucks. And, you know, so he, he's built something among college-educated voters. Then you got Joe kind of hanging on but busted down a little bit. And you got Bernie, who's still showing one out of five voters most of the time, one out of six. You know, I don't know. I think he might have a ceiling, but he's got money. He, he's got a shtick. And so those are kind of it, it, what has happened over time is the ones that have grown, which is Buttigieg and Warren, are in the race now at the top tier. And the ones that started with assets, Bernie with his base, his money, and his niche of the party, which is not small, and Biden with his goodwill and his name ID and his connection to African American South Carolina, they've stayed in. So you got kind of a final four with one, maybe two loose ends. Loose end one is will Amy Klobuchar get anything going in Iowa. And there's some evidence, finally, when it right. counts now, there's some life there. And uh, and that, you know, that, and then you've got Bloomberg. If and you could have wreck. an outside run. This history suggests yeah. that you can come from where oh, yeah, Char yeah. is, or I suppose conceivably even Booker or someone else, but she seems like the one who has the best yeah. chance to be the sort of uh, fifth, you know, first tier candidate. Yeah. Her right? challenges are, she's, in my view, now, I like her more than the liberals because she's a moderate. Right. Um, and I think she'd be competitive in the general election more than others, or some of the others. But she's been timid in the first half of the campaign, wasted a lot of time and resources. Now up against the wall, she's come to life. And you're right, the history is she has a good January and a, and a good little season right now. Two obstacles for her, I think. One, my guess is she's broke. These campaigns all blow all their money at the beginning and then starve to death at the end when they need it because the voters are logarithmatic in a caucus and primary. And two, she's going to be sitting most likely uh, in the Senate as a juror in the impeachment trial when she'd really rather be barnstorming Iowa in January. Well, Pete and Biden are going to be running the table there while her and Warren are caught. Yes, so, she, Warren, and Sanders. Klobuchar, Warren, Sanders, yeah, Booker. They could be chained to a table somewhere And they really the are Senate. supposed to show up there. They're not supposed yeah. to, like, just take off the way you do when there's normal Senate voting. They're jurors. They're supposed yeah. to be there just the way a jury is supposed to be there. For a trial. I think they're going to be holding iPads with animated campaign slogans going by or something. Yeah, right. or, Dear Iowa, I'm thinking of you like thought bubbles in yeah, real time because yeah, right. it's going to drive them crazy. What, one last point, and then I'll stop bloviating about no, no, it's good. what surprised me. Here's something that mostly didn't surprise me, but I'm enjoying. And we're going to get into the dangerous world of identity here, so hopefully I'll still have a career when I'm done. Um, the media and the punditocracy feel the pull of identity politics uh, in their thinking. So there was a presumption at the beginning of the campaign that one of the African-American candidates would catch fire because African-American voters in South Carolina would fly to them. That has not happened. We do a poll at USC, which is kind of interesting. It's a massive sample nationally. 
Um, it's an internet poll, but we actually provide people who can't afford it an iPad so we can kind of police the sample. Uh, you can see it on our website. So this is a panel. I mean, it's the same Yeah, people. a massive panel of thousands of people. Yeah, yeah. It was the one that got it kind of right last time, although it got it right by getting it wrong because the, the, everybody was pulling the national vote. But it saw Trump kind of coming. It's a tracking thing. Hopefully we'll have it this year. But looking at Kamala Harris, what, her worst group, worse than whites in the national poll, was black women, hmm. at least early. Now, if she had had early wins, the momentum factor – you know, we've seen in history African-American voters are attracted to African-American candidates who win at the beginning. They're pragmatic. And this kind of identity theory that people have to vote their gene code, that women have to vote for women, white men have to vote for white men, it's been totally disproven by actual voter behavior. But that was very in vogue. So this has been kind of a mark-to-market event, at least so far. Maybe there will be some magic. Deval Patrick, maybe some lightning bolt will come out of New Hampshire. But a lot of the presumption the media made, which shaped the, co- the coverage of the race, has been proven by the voters to be off, wrong. So they want to beat Trump, all voters. doesn't yeah. matter about race or sex, which yeah. is why Biden started that in his affection pretty well. And Elizabeth's message has resonated with a bunch, men and women. Uh, you know, she, the gender cut in her numbers is not huge. And same thing with uh, Buttigieg. So we got the – and you think Buttigieg – Real first tier. I mean, you, you consider yeah, those no, no, four no. the first tier. You don't consider it three plus I one. I think if the caucus were held tomorrow, there's a good chance he'd come in first. He, well. He's got a genuine boom happening there. But, you know, he's got a debate coming up where he's going to be on the menu. He got very lucky last time because, you know, these debates are always the same. They all agreed somebody's the problem, <laughs> and they try to find a slappy fight way to get at him without looking like they're being, you know, mean. It's Democratic primary. But he's got that, and then Christmas will slow things down a little, and then he's got January. So it feels almost a little early, but it's pretty good for him. And I guess we should mention Bloomberg. Yeah, look, you know, disclosure. I've worked for Independence PAC in the past. They're good friends of mine. I like Bloomberg. I think he'd be a good president. If I had a magic wand, he was either he or Michael Bennett would be the Democrat I'd pick. But I don't. And the very fact that I like him so much might you be a bad sign. You probably just damaged him further. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. I, I now have the, uh, the power in my minute level of influence to hurt any candidate in either party I endorse. Because uh, yeah, if I'm for a Democrat, oh, uh, evil Republican. If I'm for a Republican, oh, Trump-hating evil Republican. I'm like you. We're down yeah, here. Yeah, that's, we're the way, very can, influential here, right? Can, can we get on Kickstarter and, and raise 100 bucks <laughs> to get a pair of ferns? Because <laughs> we're good. doing between two ferns. We don't even have a fern here in the bunker underground in our noble army against Trump. But, but point too being— distinguished for ferns here. That's more of a hacks on tap thing. Yeah, ferns, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pop culture reference for the kids. Right. Uh, <laughs> you ought to have Zach Galifianakis. That would be fun. It would be like a parody of it. <laughs> uh, so uh, wrap up on Bloomberg. I'm rooting for him. It is tough to enter late. It is really tough. Nobody's ever done it. And I'm not sure parades are breaking out in the Democratic electorate that we need an old, you know, white billionaire. But he is interesting— because if he runs as the cranky old can-do guy, that's a niche nobody else has. I like that. But he Second, needs Biden, right, to, to Yeah, Yeah, I think collapse. part of it's, which we don't know, Biden's, right now, well, we'll talk about Biden in a minute, but yeah, yeah, Biden collapses, Bloomberg picks it up late. He does have the resources to make a pitch. The other thing he does, and I, I was watching the n- news cycle, I think there was a Shane Goldmacher uh, article in the New York Times or somewhere that... Uh, was about Warren adjusting her thing now that she's clearly plateaued and dropped a little in the polls from all that momentum she had. In her event, she, of course, you know, champion of class warfare, beats on Bloomberg every time she can. I mean, let me be a little careful because the mayor's got a couple hundred million dollars and he likes TV ads. Yeah. And so he could, he, he could pay that favor back in about 20 media markets in the March 3 states and talk all about Medicare for all, which even in the Democratic primary is an anchor for at least half the voters. And uh, he could pay that favor back. So it could be time for a lump of coal in the old stocking for her if she keeps it up. So Bloomberg, even if he doesn't win, could be a catalyst if he decides to stop somebody. And if there's anybody he'd want to stop, and I don't speak for him, but just ideologically, it would be her. I want to come back to that Iowa, uh, New Hampshire, South Carolina sequence and, and, and help people see how that might go. Yeah. But aren't you struck? I'm a little struck. If you just do the math, you just say how many voters now in national polls are for Biden plus Buttigieg plus Bloomberg, yeah. who's getting a few with all this money he's spending, plus Klobuchar on the one hand, and then Sanders and Warren on the other, and maybe right. throw in some of the people who were for Harris and, and some of the other minor candidates. It, for all the talk about how far left the party is, the Biden yeah. plus Buttigieg is consistently in the national polls, and I would say actually in most of the state polls, too, higher 
certainly yeah. as high as, and probably a little bit higher, actually, a little bigger number than Sanders plus Warren. Yeah. I mean, that I'm not sure people really expected well, again, the, quite I, that. I don't want to be a total media, I, I'm not even really a media, I'm a punditocracy basher, because it's an, you know, it's an unlicensed profession, right. increasingly lately on television. But I think for 2017, the people who interpret what's going on in Washington TV studios thought AOC was the Democratic Party, because she was the thing of the moment there. Right. And, you know, therefore, any Warren-esque thing will argue. I thought Warren had a lot of the components to win the nomination. Identity, she's not an old white guy. You know, there's a big constituency for that argument. Progressive economics, make those corporations pay. Big, big lump of voters in the polling for that. And fighter, every third word she says is fighter. She orders breakfast, I'll have ham, eggs, I'm a fighter. Mm -hmm. So those three things are kind of three out of the four. The last one, the biggest one is winning, but if she starts to win, she has winner. So I kind of saw her path and formula, but you're right, her signature thing, this is why policy is both important and dangerous in a campaign, has never tested that well anywhere, including in the Democratic primary. So on the second look, wait a minute, Medicare for what? Yeah. Union health care endangered, people who work for corporations that have pretty good health care. Nobody loves their health care, but people hate the idea of big, scary change in health care. Both parties have learned that lesson. you know. Yeah. Um, so the second look is hurting her a lot based on that issue. Her anti-corporate stuff, her we're going we're gonna to make the wealthy pay their share, that stuff works great across the board. Ugly little secret, because you know we, we step out of the bunker here and put on our disguises and slip out into Washington, we bump into the Republican bubble, they will all say, oh, Elizabeth Warren, I can beat her in an hour, it's easy. And I do think she's a risky candidate for the Democrats because Trump could use Medicare for All and other things to change the subject of the election or try. But you get a bunch of disaffected Trump voters in a focus group and you run her anti-corporate stuff, uh, run them, they love it. Yeah. Her populism could cut into Trump if she can shed the 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 issue of I'm going to take away your union health insurance. And she's trying. She's been Yeah, she's she picks back up, away. it looks like. I've seen some focus groups. Yeah. It looks like she picks up some of that, what is it, 9% the Obama-Trump voters. Yeah, 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 yeah. She picks up some of them. She does lose probably some of the upper middle class. Suburbans. Yeah. Defectors, the 2018 yeah. Democratic voters, the Suburbans, right. and how that trade-off works. Right. I do think that it is Medicare for all more than anything else, right? Yeah. The rest it, of it, it is all. So, look, it, remember, we're, we're old enough to remember 1982. Reagan midterm, recession-ish economy. Dems had a brilliant ad that we old Republican hacks are still pissed about, where the voiceover, you know, the Republicans, new gang, you know, they're horrible, uh, and the Social Security card, close up, and a big pair of chrome scissors, snip, cut the social, well, we went crowd, outrageous, scaring old people, it worked. Yeah, yeah. So now we get to clip blue cross cards in half with her. So she is risky. I'm against her on a lot of levels, ideological and risk to beat Trump. But people who are smug about it and think, oh, right. we'll beat her in a walk, Trump's real, big mistake. She could beat Trump, just yeah. risky. Yeah, and she's, I think, a formidable actual candidate, which matters. Yes. I mean, she, she's they, not going to get smart, flustered on stage campaign. or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, she, she is a performer. there, but, you know, she, there's room for one more run, right? I mean, this is often how Total the surgeons go. Obama run. had a little to yeah. get a big run up. And then you yeah. sort of plateau, and people say, well, that was over. That was an interesting run-up. Yeah, yeah. That's get a the second. danger for Pete, that the second look at him uh, post-Christmas, you know, starting now post-Christmas is like, yeah, okay. I mean, in some ways, it wants to be Warren versus Pete. Right. You know, uh, the technocrat, the guy doing the unifying message, partially borrowed from Yang, um, veteran, identity in his own sphere, first gay president, versus her, woman, the left-wing economics fighter and all that. And then you've got Biden, who, if Biden could operate, um, is could kind of be the safe choice. I mean, Biden could be the port in the storm, but the problem is Biden, because of his nature, and there's some charm in it, I think, but is a gaffe machine. And his campaign is reacted by hiding him, which is a mistake, because everybody knows he's a gaffe machine. So when in doubt, bottle that, put it out there, Mr. Authenticity, the one and only right. Biden. And every day he'd own the news cycle because one day he'd be great, he's empathy, he's Biden, the other day he'd fall into the orchestra pit, you know, then he'd climb out. And so I think the Biden guys need the courage just to bet it all on what they got because there's no changing them. And maybe then Biden is set up for a little comeback now after being beat down for eight months, but it'll be down to can Biden operate? Can he perform as a candidate? And that's very mixed, some days yes, some days no.
And where are you on the kind of, if Iowa looks like what you could, it seems to me, 23%, 21%, 18%, 14%, you know, is that kind of yeah. um, very indecisive result. Are you in the old school, first is first, second is second, no one, the gaps don't matter that much. That was kind of the lesson of 76 with Carter where he yeah. won some primaries by 1% yeah. and he was the winner. Or is that kind of an old media thing? You were the winner, but the New York Times said you were the winner. Now people are a little more sophisticated, and really you get a cluster, and you don't get a, a real result. I think out the of truth Iowa. is is close is close, but the coverage is winners and losers. So somebody's going to win, and partially it's expectations. Amy comes in third now, a point away from Biden. Either way, it would be perceived as a win for her. Although I don't know if she has the money to run the table. That's the problem. And this era of internet fundraising, you can amass cash quickly. But it's still a hard turnaround. I mean, you got seven days there, February 2 to February 9th from Iowa to New Hampshire. Uh, and if it's really close, the Iowa reporting is tricky. You know, because, right, because the, yeah, yeah, because of the delegate formula and all that. So a winner is not really Santorum and Romney again. That said, I think the biggest thing out of Iowa will be, does somebody beat the front runner, Joe Biden? And second, does Mayor Pete live up to the hype or Elizabeth Warren and come in first? Biden's third, which is possible. That's bad for Biden. Biden's a close is, you second. You don't think he can just survive durable. third's well, fine. A week later, if he wins New Hampshire, he's fine. But third, third, does it still go to South Carolina with a big lead, or does that start no, no, to evaporate? Melts. I think you think about You're yeah. still on the view that— Yeah, there's a conventional wisdom that Pete Buttigieg can't get arrested of African-American voters. Well, one, he's doing exactly the right thing. They had a good little web video they put out where he went down. He's campaigning. Right. And some people are saying, go away, and he comes back the next day. Yeah. He's out there looking like RFK is in the neighborhoods. You know, he, he's working it, paying attention. And if he can combine that with winning New Hampshire and beating Joe Biden, um, do, will he sweep the vote in South Carolina? No, he won't. But he'll sweep all the yuppie vote on the coast in Charleston and in some of the other cities. And he'll do enough with the African-American vote to be top two and maybe win. Top two totally gets, I mean, then he keeps going. Because remember, March is coming. Nobody except maybe Bloomberg can afford March. You got California, Texas. It is enormous. So it's going to be a media wave that fuels that. So, you know, nothing succeeds in this business like winning. Even if you lose, if you come back to win, that momentum, that is important. And how good you are at surfing in the national media when all of a sudden you have 100 cameras. Yeah. Um, and it does uh, look, become a national race after the first three oh, it totally or four. Does. The truth is, Iowa and New Hampshire, and to a lesser extent, the Nevada caucus in South Carolina, are the TV set for the national race. And what happens nationally moves the numbers there. You know, it's all interconnected. In the old days, there might have been kind of a dome around Iowa. Nobody knew right. what was going on, some unknown right. governor. Now, with the, with the ability for information to go everywhere for free on the Internet, and three cable TV stations that have an economic incentive to make every day the Hindenburg. Every day is the most important day of the campaign. Every day a siren is going off. We found out today the Buttigieg is left-handed. What does it mean? Go to our panel. Dr. Frank Luntz, what does the word left mean to people? Frank? You know, it's crazy, but it means information too much goes everywhere all the time. Uh, so my, my and the last thing would be there is a little secret to the New Hampshire primary traditionally, which is it's not bad to come in second in Iowa unless you have huge expectations you've not met because one of the great slogans in New Hampshire is screw Iowa. Right. Now, it doesn't mean you go from sixth to first, but you can come in second in Iowa and have New Hampshire decide. And then, then you run the table through. And, you know, we, we don't talk much about the Nevada caucus, but that's going to be a beat, and that's another caucus. Right. And SEIU and some of the culinary union world there has a lot of power in that. And Sanders it's also says, heavily Latino. Sanders so, has good numbers there. Sanders is in that hunt. That's a good, you know, terrain for him. Is Sanders generally underrated? It has, feels that way to a me little a little bit. bit. A little if you bit. just subjectively step back, yeah. sort of look at the numbers, that guy is hanging in there pretty he is, well. And I he mean, has cash. He can keep going. Right. Money gives you longevity in this wreck. You can take a punch. That'll be Amy's problem. Nothing happens in uh, in Iowa. She's out of gas. Yeah, she's a re she needs Iowa. I mean, That's all she's got. Right. And in fact, I was at this party in Los Angeles, my wife, and there were a bunch of partners at big law firms there, mostly women. They invite us to a dinner party and, of course, politics. And, I, uh, and they liked Amy a lot. And so I said to them, and I've tweeted this, and I think I said it on the Hacks on Tap podcast available on iTunes, uh, if you like Amy, and, you know, I, I, if I had a wand, it would be Bloomberg or Michael Bennett. So I'm not, I'm not rooting for a horse here. But if you like Amy, today, tomorrow, send money now. 
because it's all about Iowa TV, what she needs now to move her numbers to get more money to cover while she's out of town for the impeachment thing. So what about the impeachment thing? You're going to have, uh, presumably, unless things go very differently than we expect mm -hmm. at this moment, the House impeaches next week and uh, the Senate sits for some stretch, maybe all of January. Yeah. And Senator Sanders, Senator Klobuchar, Senator uh, Warren right. are all there, presumably. Well, they're supposed presumably, to be there. Let's, this is we're now in the, the rules are a little. Yeah. We're now in the crazy world right. of politics. So you know, who knows ultimately what could happen? On one hand, putting aside the tragedy of impeachment and the tragedy of Trump that we're even in this mess, right. there, there is great comedy in this because I think you will see an arms race between those Democrats to who can mime the best for the TV cameras during. Right. That's <laughs> good. Right. You know. And certainly walking yeah. out at every break to have yeah, racing out. There, uh, people will be trampled because you have these pent up candidates in a desperate fight to be president, which they wanted to be since fifth grade, you know, trying to somehow turn a jury function into a television show. Right. Second, who, who says they won't skip once in a while? This is all a right. sham. Mitch McConnell's rigged this thing. The right. Republicans are corrupt. I'm not even going to be here for the day that they bring in whoever the Republican witness is, and they go stamp out to Iowa and give a fiery speech. So I, you know, who knows what this? And thing also, I, I sort of have a slightly contrary view. Everyone's like, well, Buttigieg and Biden will be living in Iowa, and it's such a disadvantage for the other for the senators to be in Washington. But maybe it also looks a little bit the opposite. They're doing speeches to 82 people or even 282 people, yeah. some nice place in Iowa. It's very nice. They're going to say the same thing. Everyone's heard them say a million times anyway. So is it yeah. really a chance to do much? Whereas in a funny way, the whole country's watching an impeachment trial. And if you yeah. have a clever line, if, if Klobuchar or Sanders has a clever line, they're going to get a heck of a lot more attention, I should think, with 30 yeah. seconds in Washington I think there's than some seven hours in Iowa. No? But if you're, you're Klobuchar and you're coming on, and there's interest in you. So she's the one who really... The ability to go work gyms at three to 400 people multiple times, you know, two a day, eight days, it, it has an impact. Yeah. And there is kind of a political tourism factor, God bless the islands, because they do show up to hear you. Right. Same with New Hampshire. And so near the end being there, especially if you've got momentum, is important. Now, she'll probably have a moment or two, but she's got, you know, 47 other egomaniacs in the Democratic Senate caucus and right. same on the Republican who want moments too. Yeah. So it, it, I think it is a disadvantage. The other thing you're not doing when you're sitting there on the thing is you're not dialing for dollars to fuel the machine because if she starts working in Iowa, she needs cash to be able to play the table into New Hampshire, Boston TV. So, um, you know, time is the biggest resource in a campaign, and being bolted to a chair forever, uh, even on, on television, is, I think, pretty tricky. Yeah, it probably doesn't hurt. Sanders, in a way, maybe doesn't matter quite as much, I suppose. He's already got the vote he's got. Yeah, yeah. Um, my guess is he has a ceiling, but as you say, he's in it, you know? And, and again, Sanders has cash, so he can flood the airways. Right. Amy is hand to mouth, I'm almost certain. I, I, don't, I don't know what her checking account is, but I've been looking at the reports pretty carefully. So anyway, it's tricky for her. It, it, it is tricky for Warren, who right now needs a comeback um, because she has atrophied a bit there. Uh, but she has a great organization she's built during all those early months where she was ahead. Now, organization only amplifies message. If they decide your message is too scary, organization in the world can't save you. But, you know, if, if Warren can operate. And the last thing is, if you're a Pete, lesser extent of Biden, um, and I don't mean to sound like I'm showing for Pete. I just see the road for him. Uh, you can run against Washington a little bit while they're all throwing water balloons and yeah, in, in DC. We can't just be involved. We need to it. think about how to govern yeah. over the next four or eight. I'll years. tell you the one thing I was surprised with. If I were Biden or the Biden people, I'm sur I would have had him show up during those hearings, uh, particularly the intelligence committee hearings. Not in person, but I would have put him on TV in a, a big, flashy press conference. I've been watching it. Here's what I think. You know, yeah, he's on the, the former office. vice president. I've dealt with all he, these. He could have dominated the news cycle for three days and made it Trump and Trump drags versus Joe Biden. And now the general election started, and he's our guy. No, and he could do a lot. Well, I guess the question is, so on the one hand, he has real credibility. He knows a lot about yeah. these places. He's been there. He's dealt with ambassadors. He could really explain, in a way, how what Trump is doing how inappropriate it is, how unusual it is, right. how damaging right. it is to our foreign policy. On the other hand, he's Biden, and Trump is claiming that he wants the Ukrainians, Ukrainians to look at Hunter Biden. So yeah. what about that? Is that a problem for him or an advantage or nothing? Hunter or, Biden? Yeah. Uh, both. I, look, I, in the world of voter politics, where when in doubt go to old George Lakoff, the 
political science professor of the great book, don't think of an elephant. Well, now we're all thinking of elephants. Right. The Hunter Biden thing is confusing, even if it's wrong. Right. You know, it just affects it's out there. And, of course, our Republican world now will repeat anything. You know, so we're winning in the East. Uh, right. Hey, I hear we're winning in the East. No, we're yeah. getting slaughtered in the East. No, no, they say we're well, now we're debating. Over it's we're going winning. great. It's going yeah, great. No, no, right. no. We got them on the run. <laughs> yeah. St- Stalin is hiding from, you know, the <laughs> almighty uh, armies of the, of the leader. Um, so it hurts on that level. Uh, on the other level, it's an opportunity for Biden to pivot and punch, get into Eric and Donald, you know, they're junior. I mean, there's a lot Biden could do. The problem is on the topic of his kids for incredibly human and understandable, at least to me, reasons, right. Biden doesn't perform so well. We could see it when that farmer, you know, he got in that thing at the Iowa caucus. And by the way, I would rather have raving, pissed off Biden on the offense than timid Biden curled up in a ball getting pummeled. So I thought it was a step forward, even though it was far from perfect, it was overkill. But we're all talking about Biden. That's a good change for Biden. Um, so there's an opportunity in the Hunter thing, but I don't think he's kind of psychologically capable of taking it, which is a problem. And generally, it sounds like you're skeptical of the campaign. I mean, the, I mean campaigns do yeah. matter when you have, sometimes they don't matter if someone has just so much body yeah. weight that they sort of end up winning no that, matter that's what. That's his thing. Mondial, but in this case, you, know. you have four genuine you have people in the 20s and teens. You don't have someone at 44 or whatever. Yeah. So it feels to me like the actual quality of candidate and campaign matter a lot. And it sounds to me like you yeah. think pretty well of Warren and Buttigieg as both candidates and campaigns. Yeah. And are skeptical of Biden? I mean, as War- president, I could live with Biden, of course, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he'd be well staffed and then we, I wouldn't worry too much about him. Um, so, but as far as. But as an analytical, just. Yeah, just just as a horse race thing, like a bloodless insurance adjuster here uh, or actuary. I have been short Biden from the beginning because I don't think it's his time. Uh, And I thought if he operated really well, maybe he could overcome that with that body weight because that's an asset. But I've never thought he'd operate well. Uh, He reminds me a lot of, of somebody I really loved and admired, Bob Dole, which is the things that made him a giant in the Senate that small room ability. I mean, what the Democrats understand is there's one person with a track record of sitting one-on-one in a room alone with Mitch McConnell and getting something, and it's Joe Biden. Yep. Um, in, in that arena, he's great. In the monkey show of, of modern politics, he, he's just not that equipped. It's a bit of a, you know, uh, John Brown, the steam engine thing. Uh, and so I think it's kind of sad because there's things about Biden I admire, but I've, I've always been short him as the nominee. That said, he has some durability. Warren has a flaw, this Medicare for All thing. It's hurting her badly now. He has been on the offense on that to his credit. He has a reservoir of goodwill. So if he can make something happen here in the next 50 days in Iowa and, you know, 10 days to New Hampshire, whatever it is, uh, seven days to New Hampshire. Days, yeah. And then South Carolina is there for him. But he has to survive an early gauntlet that's tough. Showing some life now, though. So maybe I'm wrong. I'd be happy to be wrong on this. But there I've been is short. And there's something a little crazy, isn't there, about three people in their 70s? Yeah. And then Buddha, I mean, I suppose that's why Buddha judges come up in part, because everyone's mm-hmm. looking, really, this is the alternative to Trump, who's himself in his 70s. And yeah. I not like, what about the next generation and all that? Yeah. The yeah. only things that go doing that generation has done okay at times, yeah. but maybe it's time for them well, to move on. Biden and Warren are 70s and they play 60s because they're kind of vigorous people. Bernie's late 70s, plays late 70s. You think? And yeah, yeah and Amy place younger and and Buttigieg. Now, the one guy we haven't mentioned, who I actually admire because I don't agree with him a lot of ideological stuff, but in the last debate, he gave a pro-growth speech against the kooky economics I admired. I felt my hand wanting to send him a check, and he's been totally brave on an issue we both care about, charter schools, which is Cory Booker. Yeah. Who is, I'm sort I think, of a surprised serious person. that he hasn't yeah. done better. He's a Me too. capable candidate, it seems like. Me but. too. I, I, you know, we had him on the Hacks on Tap podcast, and I, I pitched him something. I said, look, I think you've got a message in your Iowa events, because he was doing the candidates too, but it was true. I get 300 people, and they come out, standing ovation, they love it. I go, yeah, they love your show, but your show isn't about you for president. It's about uniting the country. And you've got this communitarian message, which is great in a general election, and in many ways what the country needs to hear. But it isn't, you're our champion, go go follow me into the breach. We know what Elizabeth Warren's going to do. You know, we, we know that she's going to go after the rich and she's going to take over health care. She's a fighter. We know what Bernie's going to do. He's going to go to that pharmaceutical company that saved his life with a stent and arrest all the executives. <laughs> you know, we, we know what his plan is. 
We know what Mayor Pete's going to do. He's going to get a flow chart and a computer and figure it all out, beep, beep, beep. And we know what Joe's going to do, sing a sad Irish song, cry, and, you know, take care of business. Corey's like an observer on the campaign. I think that's what hasn't clicked. But something hasn't clicked. Now, he has a moment now because we're in this awkward situation where the PBS debate, the next big one that's coming, will not have an African-American candidate on the stage who's a serious, you know, person. Apologies to Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, she won't be there either, I don't think so. Yeah, I guess that's being, I haven't right. seen the poll yeah, this I morning. Yeah, I think so, whatever. But anyway, point is, and this is a party where 25%, you know, the vote, increasing actually, is African-American. That does seem weird to me. In fact, I'm surprised that Pete and Biden and Klobuchar didn't get together to send Perez a letter yeah. saying, bring him in. And Perez would have said, well, the DNC rules. Uh, you know, good luck with that, Perez. Uh, but they didn't. So, and, and that'll give... Corey, I believe, a legitimate moment, which he started to do to make a stand on it. I doubt it's enough to ignite his campaign. I doubt he's got the cash to do much more. But it has been, that has been a surprise, I guess. I, I, I made a bet early that I knew Corey would do better than Kamala in Iowa. But I didn't expect, you know, he'd be fifth and she'd drop out. I right. thought he'd beat her there. So I was wrong about and being right on that. You mentioned cash a few times. You still think I mean, some people might say that's old school, pay TV with most social media, modern world, blah, blah, blah. Does, does old fashioned TV ads or digital even matter as much? Well, it, it's funny. You get the salty old consultants together and we all bitch and moan about the digital thing because there's now a, a group of young consultants with extremely stylish eyeglasses that the sales pitch in both parties is these old guys only know TV. They're, they're dinosaurs. They don't get it. You know, uh, we've got digital analytics and a magic light box. It, nobody can understand. And the right. campaign people all nod because they don't want to look like idiots and you know, gobbledygook. Hillary had a lot of that. She turned off her polling. What happened in Michigan? Yeah. So, you know, I built my first computer for soldering iron. I'm a tech nerd. I, I get the tech stuff. The fact I'm old is not a problem. But there is this bias now against traditional stuff. And the truth is it all works. What works is message. These, the rest of it's plumbing and wiring to get the message to people. But trying to do it for free without paid TV and paid digital, without money in your campaign account, just based on social media, you have to be really, really famous. If you're a Kardashian running for president, uh, if you're George Clooney running for president, if you're Oprah, yeah, you can do that. If you're Trump, Donald Trump. a little bit, yeah. Well, he was the role model. Yeah. You know, people thought he was a can-do guy because he fired Gilbert Gottfried on television right. in a fake set designed to look like a boardroom. And Gilbert was paid to pretend there, like all the celebrities he hires for that show. It's a product placement, so it shows a commercial. Uh, works for a pre-aware title like Trump. But if you're Amy Klobuchar or Cory Booker or Pete Buttigieg, no, no, money. Look, the reason Pete took off in Iowa and New Hampshire, where he's also done well, has been a mix of a message that's resonated with a chunk of the voters and the money to go up first on television for real in both states. He's been up for three months in Iowa. Advertising works. One of my favorite jokes is an old marketing joke that ad, you know, old dinosaur ad people like me tell, which goes back to the 60s, which is the market researcher goes to the supermarket with a clipboard and starts interviewing consumers and walks up to a consumer by the toothpaste counter at the supermarket says, excuse me, ma'am, do you buy uh, Crest toothpaste because of our advertising? You've probably seen our catchy new jingle. And the consumer becomes a rate and says, I don't buy your stupid toothpaste because of your stupid ads. I'm not Pavlog's dog. You don't manipulate me with advertising. I hate your jingle. I happen to decide to buy Crest toothpaste because I get 23% fewer cavities with MFP fluoride. <laughs> you know, so yeah, ads don't work. You know, money doesn't work. Yeah, so ads still matter message matters, and ads are an expensive the and highly matters. effective way. And so are digital. There's, they're yeah. both. Yeah. But the idea you can use digital only, here, here's the problem with digital. Digital is very good at targeting. Digital is very good at what, what we call a, a, a con, basically where it's like catalog sales, where you know all your consumers and you have a dialogue with them because free stamps, digital. Right. Uh, Obama did that very well, CRM model. All that's true, but if there's not a message, I mean, you, you get my buddy Axelrod drunk, and we've done this, Obama would have won without the internet. The press always covers process. 
The best thing to be in 2009, after Obama won, was a computer salesman hanging around the RNC. Because right. the doters read the process press. Hey, they had this internet, and they had guys who don't shower in a room, and they had magic. Right. Get some fucking magic. Oh, sorry, I'm now it's gone okay. blue. Yeah. Right? Okay. And so the magic salesman, I, a quick funny story, do we have time? Yeah, sure. So <clears throat> before my current job working at Quiznos, I was the idiot who blew $100 million on the Jeb Bush Super PAC, you may remember. I recall that, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And uh, I still get Jeb, fan mail. Jeb, exclamation point, yeah. Yeah, well, no, that, that goes way back. <laughs> so that's where we, Lamar, exclamation point, was stolen from Jeb, exclamation point, 94. Oh, I uh, didn't realize that. So Lamar in 96. I'm going to write a book, The History of the Stupid The exclamation, exclamation point, point I remember from Lamar in yeah, 96. Yeah, yeah. But that was Jeb 90, Jeb's losing race yeah. in 94. The yeah. exclamation point snark is the currency of the D.C. experts who are wondering why it's not President Biden, who clearly was, you know, going to, uh, President Jeb Bush all that right. anyway back then so of course washington all thought gotta gotta suck up to the jeb world they're gonna win now inside we actually knew he wasn't quite what they were looking for he knew that but he was going to give it the old college try because he didn't want to see the party go exactly where it's went to his credit anyway so i go to the rnc building to you know, have a nice meeting with some of those guys as we're setting everything up at the beginning and all very nice and i remember when i was a million years ago chairman of the georgetown college republican one of our jobs was to provide bodies to the RNC to work in the phone bank. Because one of the big purposes of the RNC is to raise small dollar contributions. So they had a big phone bank. They'd pay you whatever the two bucks an hour was in the early 80s and Reagan era. And you'd have a computer printout and college kids and others would, hello, Mr. Crystal, hi, how are things in Kansas? You know, Ronald Reagan really needs $20 now. Ted Kennedy and Fidel Castro are trying to take over Nebraska. Please send, you know, and it was a fundraising phone bank. Thank you, letters going out, 100 phones. So I walk into the RNC and I see where the phone bank used to be. Yeah. And one of the RNC staffers with an honest heart and full of pride said, Mike, we've gone digital. It's the future, you know? <laughs> and there were three guys with, you know, extremely complicated and important eyewear, like nodding a lot, 28. Right. See if the old dinosaur gets the digital. And they have 200 computer screens lined up and there are college kids typing emails, asking for money. It was exactly the same. Yeah, Form funny. follows function. And so, it's all message, whether it's a finance message, dear turnip, you know, send blood, or whether it's a voter message, sometimes the two interlock. Like all, all the Democrats are panicking because Trump's spending a lot on Facebook. Most of the Trump Facebook advertising is, dear retired army captain, the Mexicans have already made it to Laredo, send money, build a wall. It's fundraising. Now it has a political impact because he'll call up his brother-in-law and say, the damn Mexicans are running into Laredo and only Trump's gonna stop them. You know, but, Form follows function. And so all this stuff is plumbing and wiring for a good message and a finance pitch. That is eternal. It doesn't change. So if you're a candidate who's not famous, you're not on a reality TV show, you don't fire Gary Busey for not selling enough snow cones to launch the new perfume line, you need dollars to put your message in front of people. Which is why Bloomberg now, and just money alone, has gone from three to six in national polls. I, people are underreporting that. It's sort of like, well, yeah. Bloomberg's so rich, of course he's going to go there. But it's not, if you think about it for a minute, going from well, one, really, to six, I'd say, at this point, in a couple of weeks, he's spending a huge amount of money to do that. Yeah. But he has a huge amount of money. Yeah. And why can't he go from yeah. six to eight? Why can't he go from eight to 11? It does make yeah. me wonder that if, I still think he, did, he would need the opening of people deciding yeah. that Biden's not going to make problem it. He be, needs to be the insurance yeah. against Biden, plus not having a Klobuchar right. rise, right. plus somehow Buttigieg not being he's, quite he's acceptable. It's a little tricky for him. I mean, yeah, he's getting on deck. But the problem is when the real show starts at the end of uh, January, there's going to be a daily drama with 100 million eyeballs, and he's not part of it. With uh, Iowa and New, New Hampshire, Hampshire. Yeah, that is so, a real yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah, no, and that's what wiped out the other folks who've tried to join late. The big show starts, and you join the movie in the third act, it's hard to be the star. Yeah. Now, maybe this will be the perfect storm. It's the best shot he's got. Now, if I were them, I would have tried New Hampshire. They were afraid to enter late, and Biden is kind of in their way. A campaign without Biden has more room for him. But I think uh, he uh, New Hampshire was a doable move for Bloomberg. But yeah. they made their decision, and now... They're, they're spending what they've got. They've got two things. They've got money to make a pitch. He's got a story. Unlike Tom Steyer, Bloomberg's done stuff. The other thing he has, which is a hard thing to commit to, but they have no choice, is the grumpy old pro from Dover. Basically, I'm not going to take your stupid questions. I'm too busy running the world here, moron. I got a Trump to be. You know, to be the grumpiest guy, but smart. Yeah. Now, will that get in 50% of the Democratic primary? Long shot, but he's the only, he's the uncola. He's the only guy with that. If I were them, I wouldn't be shy about it. 
you know, do the old Rumsfeld thing with the press, be that guy and build a little And cult. do they understand that? I do. I, I agree with that. But I would say they they seem a little bit torn between just embracing who they are and running a more uh, conventional. You know, I've worked for them in the past. i got friends there. I think they see it both ways. Uh, but, but they know that Bloomberg ain't going to charm the electorate. Right. Right. But he is, I mean, he is such a bigger Godzilla in real life than Trump is. He's a real billionaire. He's a real billionaire. Uh, excuse me, he's a, he's a much bigger, Trump's kind of a fake accounting trick billionaire. Bloomberg's a real deal. He's very smart, very tough. He ran a huge city for 12 yeah, years. No, no, no. no. Th this is, you know, Trump is Jerry Cooney and Bloomberg is Ali in the building uh, millionaire, billionaire sweepstakes. So, yeah, but they might as well bottle what they got. I don't like Biden. Final thing just about the current field. I'm, yeah. I, I think you're right. The gender gap is not actually what people thought it was. And the race yeah. gap is helping Biden right now, which is who is not African-American. Right. So that wasn't quite well, what the they idea, expected. I, I but it, what it, about it, age? It does seem to me yeah. that I've never quite seen numbers. I think I just saw it was New Hampshire poll that had, I think Biden, who was leading in the, you know, was near, near the top of the, or tied for the top of the poll, was it like 3% among voters yeah. under 35 yeah. and you know 43% voters yeah. 65 and up. I've never quite seen that kind of gap and Sanders has the reverse. Right. What do you mean I mean what is that about? Is the are young people in the Democratic Party and it's maybe in the country as a whole that yeah. far to the left of their well, I parents? Don't, you know, I don't I mean <laughs> there, it can work on a couple axes. It, it could be left and there is a lot of progressive energy of the young. You know, the progressives have kind of a romantic pitch they make, and that can appeal when you're young. I was, I'm, I'm a conservative, and I'm fairly right-wing. When I was young, I was crazy-ass right-wing. Um, right. So, you know, we were all out getting arrested in front of the Soviet embassy, having a great time. Right. So the, um, the, I think there's some of that. But I think what people have missed, on one hand, Biden's not doing as well with younger voters. Bernie is old, and he does well with younger voters. Right. So it seems to be more ideological. But what people miss, especially you focused on the AOC as equals all the Democrats last year, is there are a ton of old Democratic primary voters. So the, the idea that the medium age of the Democratic uh, primary voter is Twitter is wrong. So it, um, a lot of the real forks in it are, are um, you know, uh, income, college education too, not just age. Yeah. And the, the, again, the misnomer has been this presumption that people vote their DNA, which is wrong. You know, th th we have free choice. That's the great, th that's why this identity thing drives me crazy. People choose who they're for right. based on their own set of instructions. And so far what African Americans are doing in the, in the electorate that, of the early states is they're choosing to beat Trump with the seasoned old pro who they saw working with Barack Obama and they like him. And you know, that's a, that's a very rational, smart decision and they have the right to change it if something changes when there's some winning and losing in February, which I think they probably will. But, you know, the, this reverse engineering of who you're supposed to be for, I, I think it's, it's an insult. Yeah, that's interesting. No, I, I agree it is. It's, it's terrible. Um, Republicans, let's take two minutes on that and get to the general election. Yeah. Are there any? Uh, yeah. My well, friend Mark Sanders. There are a lot of them. They're off the Trump. Hour, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was in. Walsh I, I, Wilde, I was telling Mark. Walsh and Wilde are doing their best, but. I've known Mark since he was a freshman. I like him. He's kind of a quirky dude, but you know, he was always principled in his fiscal conservatism. He had other you know, setbacks along the way, but uh, he had a million five in his campaign account. I kept telling him, Mark, put it all up on New Hampshire TV and some digital too, <laughs> and basically make a fiscal conservative Trump's bankrupting the country. Because you know, we used to carp about Obama. Trump is the king of this. Right. And, and I think you get 25% of the primary and get a little attention and then lose the nomination. But, um, you know, Trump has the party. Yeah, are you surprised? I'm, I'm surprised in the last three, four months by the degree of and the totality of the capitulation to Trump. Aren't yeah, you? I, a little I, bit. I, I, I expected we, more resistance both in Congress yeah. and among the electorate, actually, among the Republican electorate. Yeah, well, we, we ought to change the logo. We ought to get rid of the Jack Frost elephant, and the new logo is a terrified white guy, you know, duct taped to a chair. Uh, in Congress, because it, I, I, I had no doubt that he'd have a grip, but I thought the Republican resistance would be more than about twelve of us. Yeah, and it, it's it's uh, it's heartbreaking. I joined this thing to to be for conservative stuff and fight the Soviets. Now now Putin's running foreign policy. We're blowing up the deficit, and the rule of law doesn't matter. So you know, you look back. Stuart Stevens is uh, actually got writing this book, which is ba basically the argument. It was all a lie. Yeah. He's even farther out than I am on it. Um, 
But it is pretty heartbreaking if you spent 30 years yeah, in Yeah, I don't know if it was alive, but it certainly went away quickly, the limited, I mean, yeah. pr pretty serious and well-developed intellectual arguments, limited government, you really don't want a situation where the government just can do everything because then you're yeah. on a slippery slope and, right. and also it's just chaotic. And, and now it's just taken for granted that of course yeah. Republicans will ask for the government to do whatever. So let's talk about the election. What is mm -hmm. 2020 gonna look like? I mean, it's a real I mean, A, cake, sort of just, just talk about, you know, the actual balance of power between Trump and whoever the Democratic nominee is, just from what you can tell now in terms of the polls in 2018 well, and so forth. Then B, what is the actual year going to look like? Because that I'm sort of interested. I don't yeah. think people have focused enough on that. They kind It'll of be vaguely, 68. Yeah. they sort of assume it's going to be like a normal election, yeah. even though it's not really, doesn't feel like a normal time. So, Yeah, I would say assume nothing. You know, a lot of the rules have been bent now that we're in a reality TV show with nuclear weapons, which is a interesting way to you know look at America now uh, I, I would say uh, uh, on the polling on Trump's numbers you kind of if you x-ray Trump so there is a I don't know I would say this the, the greatest accomplishment Trump has done is convince kind of elite America particularly in the Democratic Party and reinforce the Republican Party with this kind of Rasputin mind twist he's done right. which basically was wait a minute election day 2016 Nate Silver says Hillary's going to win easy. We can all relax because everybody's watching their New York Times, everybody in that cohort. Right. And that idiot Mike Murphy blabbermouth. He says that, you know, Bill Crystal, all the experts, and then Trump wins. And so it's funny. I live in Los Angeles, so I'll be, you know, minding my own business, pumping gas, and somebody will whir up to me in a Tesla or whatever and, and, uh, and start saying, you know, don't you know, uh, I've seen on TV saying Trump's in political trouble. He's got a secret horn he blows, and the, the hillbillies in Kansas all vote for him. You know, it's all this contemptuous right. flyover country. You know, he's got some magic hillbilly potion, and so they think he can't lose because there's magic. Now, like everything else, politics is full of noise and bullshit. You know, the punditry, we talked about that. The polls, half of which are incompetently done because the publishers right. don't want to spend any money. Right. Polling has become more expensive and harder to do. So there's so much noise. But if you're running a cable TV network, you're, you know, your P&L is every day to the Hindenburg. So a new poll, we made news yeah. and we covered it. Anyways, I the mean, they try. Which the polling, incidentally, because it is more yeah. expensive to do now. Because yeah, people answer phones the phones, they have to do And so stuff. it's more difficult to do, and the people doing it have less discretionary money than they used to when newspapers used to make money right, and so right, forth. Right, right, yeah. right. But they're treated even more seriously than they used to. And then you look at them, and I'm no expert, but I've done but campaigns. But it's food for and the... Up, and yeah. you look at the poll for, for literally yeah. 40 seconds, and you see, well, this is really, I yeah. mean, maybe it shows you a tiny bit in terms of yeah. directionally, but you can't take these numbers seriously down to sort of 2 3 4%, and people are earning Honestly, saying, well, so and so's up too. And yeah. you, that's literally. Yeah, and they forgot the margin of error, too. Which yeah, is, that's drives literally the noise. I mean, that is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, that is. But, but again, because that we're is 37 in people instead of 34 people but in saying the, they're for right, X. Right. It's just random. And it's last yeah. week, and it's a cable noise meter, and it's right. the world. But because we're in this reality show politics where we need scorecards all the time, it's, right. it, it's good business. So, anyway, putting all that aside, we, not unlike Wall Street, there's a great term of art, mark to market. You know, we had to sell this studio tomorrow, what could we get? Now, right. we should wait a year because the studio market will go up or make more, but if we had to sell tomorrow, right. what's the bottom line value? In politics, that's election day. And if you look, since the, the day Trump took the oath of office, and the, you know, heaven shuddered, the Republican Party has performed poorly in essentially every election. Some, more, some disasters, some just bad. The Wisconsin, Supreme Court low turnout race was a rare sparkle of light, but there are you know 300 other terrible races. We've lost control of 10 governorships. We have lost the House. It has been a pretty much a trail of tears under Trump. So when you mark us to market, the country tends to want to fire Trump in about nine and a half out of 10 cases. That's a bad sign. His polling is bad. He's in this cul-de-sac, you know, 40, 42, 43 right. percent of the vote. That's a tough place to be. 38 would be better, but it's not good. Demography is bad for Trump. If you adjust the election just for mortality, a lot of old Trump voters have died, and new 19, 20-year-old voters have been created, a group Trump loses by double digits. So on almost any, every empirical measurement, Trump is in huge trouble. The country wants to fire him. The question is twofold. Going forward, can Trump, like prior presidents, say, holy crap, I'm going to lose. i got to change it up here. Let's have a plan. Chop, chop. 
speeches, the campaign, all the massive muscle of an incumbent presidency. I don't think Trump is capable of that. Right. I think Trump watches cable TV and tweets about it, and that's fundamentally the presidency. Uh, and it's all emotional, and it's reacting, and I think he's declining a bit under all this pressure of impeachment. So I don't think we're going to see a brilliant tactical campaign to change. The other question is... We will is, see a willingness, like Nixon, I would say, in 71, to, to use government resources and policies oh, totally. to try to win over voting blocks. And Nixon was very good at it yeah. and went from a fairly tight, what looked like it could be a tight race in 71 to a sort of artificial economic boom and to other things. And of course, Vietnam right. and peace negotiations right. in 72. And so, McGovern, which would be my second And McGovern, point. okay, so... Who they nominate. But Trump doesn't... I mean, Trump has a little bit of an instinct and some of his people to be like Nixon in that sense, oh, sort yeah. of ruthless well, they're and immoral. using the government. It's just like, hey, we can sell but the I'm not sure they're good enough. and give you know, the money It's going to be yeah. so obvious. You yeah. know, I'm opening a plant. This is this is a yeah, new yeah. apple plant. No, no, it'll but be then it turns out it's an apple plant from seven years ago, and it's yeah, not yeah, new, yeah. and it, it's, it, I don't even know but if they really... But don't think of an elephant. Hey, I hear there's a new apple plant. Yeah. Um, the second point, the biggest one, is will the Democrats nominate a candidate that Trump can work with to change the topic from firing him, which is where the weight and balance and center of the gravity of the election is? And historically, it is about the incumbent president. But will they give him a Medicare for all that he can go work with, which is a heavy weapon? Because the fulcrum vote for Trump is can he hold his outlier votes, the Pasco County, Florida's, where he massively overperformed even Ronald Reagan which are a small number of places, but he super performed there. Can he hang on to that? Polling says right now, probably not. It'll be down a little, but yeah. we will see in a culture war in the general. And two, can he recover some of the vote in the Republican suburbs, college-educated white people who we got murdered with in the midterms? Does he have an economic issue? They're going to raise your taxes, or they're too liberal. Again, a warrant type thing. Um, that's the big question. And we don't know yet. We don't know who they're going to nominate, and we don't know how their candidates are going to perform. We're, we have an inkling now. We've had the first act, Democratic primary. But my friend Axelrod, I'm going to murder his phrase, but he calls running for president like an electron microscope of the soul. My analogy is it's like being strapped to the roof of a station wagon and go through 100 car washes. And so we're going to see what kind of dem we have, and can Trump use it to move the election a bit, um, which he will do. He will be shameless. And... Uh, those are the open questions. But the gravity, uh, without meaning that I feel I'm flogging the podcast too much, but we did our predictions this week, and X said 50-50. I said 35% for Trump to yeah, be elected. Yeah, that feels right to me. I think it's closer yeah. to 2 to 1 than 50-50, just on the numbers. I feel better now that Warren Just on the numbers. I yeah. mean, but the McGovern question is an interesting one. Yeah. But the economy's not going to get better, presumably. The world's not going to be obviously safer. Now, Trump is capable right. of having some fake deals, I suppose, and maybe mm -hmm. some authoritarian regimes that want to help Trump will have some fake deals with yeah. him. And you can imagine a sort of mini, mini version of Nixon 72, you know, China, yeah. Russia, whoa, he's, he, look what he's doing. His biggest problem is he's going to run out of white people. And the white people he's got are not as happy with him as they used to be. Right. And the country is going to be 1% more democratic just generically based on demography than it was four years ago, maybe a point and a half. And so is Trump gaining anything dubious unless there's a Democratic ogre that can move Republican suburbs back to holding their nose? Yeah, who are willing. And, and there were some people who voted for Hillary or stayed home yeah. who are now, f after three years of a pretty good economy and no war, right. and but, but discounting idea, people like us who are complaining about all kinds of th esoteric yeah. things like the rule of law. Well, we're in and with the, that fancy pants president of and, France bill. Yeah, you know, exactly. And then so there yeah. are some upper middle class, you know, semi-Republicans you could imagine coming back to Trump. That would be his, but he, that's he, what he would need. But he would also need to halt what I think is underreported. Don't you, Stanley Greenberg makes this point. It seems right to me just looking at the numbers. There was pretty big erosion in 2018, not just in the upper middle class suburbs, among, everywhere, yeah, yeah, yeah everywhere, yeah. including rural working class whites, yeah, yeah, especially yeah. on women. The gender gap, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the working class, yep, 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 is really massive. No, that's working class men are all on board. Working class women, they yeah. look at the immigration stuff and the meanness and the yeah. craziness, and it's like, I'm not really on board. And the that. noise, you know, that, right. that's why I think it's 35. percent I, I think he's going to get trimmed. And Carville's doing the one I think smart Democratic super PAC which is raise a few million and laser shot at about 300,000 voters in Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Michigan to grind into that group. Because um, remember, revert to mean, Trump loses. Yeah. And the other thing is, do we want four more years of a, a show that's getting a little long in the tooth? Yeah. It's exhausting. The last, here, here's my last, here's a crazy theory of the election. Completely crazy, don't write it down, don't tweet it. But 
And, and this is we'll like, just say it off the record here on this show. Yeah, right. You know we'll say it off the record right? on streaming television. Uh, but I kind of believe that after 30 years of doing this, you know, it's funny. You talk to like airline pilots in the old days who were flying transcontinental or transocean a lot before all the electronics. They were all like yeah. true cut astronaut type guys. And yeah, right. They say, you know, we don't talk about this because we don't want anybody to say we're cuckoo. But we've seen some weird stuff up in the sky. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm just saying. And then they stop, you know. Or you talk to physicists, and all of a sudden it doesn't make sense. God is left-handed. Right. Well, in campaigns, sometimes um, life does imitate art. And if there is a life imitate art question to the universe, if Trump is to be beaten, who beats him in the, in the great American novel version of this? Well, Trump is an old man who still thinks it's Queens in 1958. Neo-racist, ethnic bigot, um, D's and nose kind of insecure guy, bit of a blowhard. Uh, cares about how many steel mills we have. Right. One candidate is secular, highly educated, service economy, and gay. The opposite of Trump. Total modernity, the path we're on. Trump is yesterday. So if there is to be a turn, if it was literature, yeah, it would be Mayor that. Pete. Now, I'm not sure he'll ever get there, but in terms of the ordered universe and life imitating art, it, it has also had the most improbable rise from nobody mayor of South Bend with no money to probably the strongest finance candidate, which you do by getting tens of thousands of people to give you a lot of money, and currently the, the guy whose tickets are selling the most in the all-important Iowa caucus. Can it all go to shit? Absolutely. But in the ordered universe a little bit, um, it's, uh, it's interesting. You know, it's funny. I have this app which I'm obsessed with. I'm now going to plug an app on your podcast. I'm, I'm that shameless. So yeah. this thing is like the old Magic 8-Ball. How much do you get ball? for this? You get, uh, I get uh, absolutely the commission, no The commission money. here, yeah, that's what they always say, but, right? But this you thing know. has been uncannily right. I'm about to go into like Like Paul a, Manafort and others, Mike yeah. Murphy has no interest in this. It's called so no Universe planet. Splitter. It's like a buck on iTunes. And what this thing does is they, they like split an atom at CERN in Geneva. And it's basically a yes-no magic eight ball. You type in two things, and you, well, hang on. I'll, we're even do it here. We're really going to screw up your podcast. This is, yeah. So uh, we're going let, to, let's see what the universe says, shall we? In so one what's universe. Name, what's the name of this app? It's called uh, universe. universe, Universe Splitter. Okay. In one universe, I will now, um, let's see, uh, vote Democratic. No, how about one universe, Pete wins. And in the other universe, Trump wins. And this thing has an animated deal, so it's worth the time we're wasting as Andy starts to wonder what the hell, <laughs> right. they, uh, uh, what the hell we're doing here. Yeah, we're right, right, so we're renting the studio by the, t you know, by the minutes. We're, so we're that's well okay, funded though. by the deep state. Totally, yeah. If only. All right. If only. So in Where one universe, I will now, if Pete wins, and the other Trump. So we split the universe, and it input it goes over the computer. It talks to Geneva. The device is ready, photons emitted, because they're doing it all the time, so they just tag one. There's a quantum event, two universes are created. You are in the universe in which Trump wins. So there you go, Bill. Life will not This is telling us that they, art. they think that, yeah. Yep. We asked the universe, and he said, no thanks. That's worrisome. So, yeah, it'll that's be on worrisome. Breitbart in an hour. Yeah, that's right, that'll be huge. They love science. Um, good point. Speaking of magic, I'm always struck when I talk to people <laughs> good, about the Electoral good College. Transition. Was good, right? Speaking of astrology <laughs> and bullshit, go ahead. What about the Electoral College? I'm struck talking to people that they also think that's part of the Trump magic, you know, the, the, yeah. the magic sauce, that they've sort of lost track of the fact that you still do need to win the state by popular vote, even if, yeah. of course, you can lose the national popular vote by two or yeah. three million, maybe four or five, I guess. And there is this kind of thing where I, you, you say everything you just said, but Mike, there's the Electoral College. And at some point, I mean, aren't people overdoing that a little? At the end of the day, you do, I mean, Mm -hmm. Voters will move in Pennsylvania and Michigan and Wisconsin just the way they yeah. move in other states. I mean, it's a little bit overdone, isn't it? You know, it? It, it, you're exactly right. Part, part of the wisdom is there's an Electoral College fortress now. Right. By the way, you know who Which invented Which the Senate stuff has, has helped, I think, the fact that he held the Senate in 2018. Yeah, yeah, and we have the advantage people. in the Senate, but globally we're in trouble. Yeah, and the Senate yeah. doesn't. I mean, it's, it's not a good analogy because the Senate is two senators per state, whereas the Electoral College is, right. with a slight exception of the fact that everyone gets two, you know, is population-based, right? Yeah. So. That said, what this is really about is there are like 3,300 counties in the U.S., and Hillary got 
the huge majority of her vote from about 170 right, of them. Right. So do the Democrats run a super woke candidate who will run San Francisco from 80 to 85? Doesn't really change the outcome because we know what the California Electoral College count will be. So one voter in Pasco, Florida, or Luzerne County, Pennsylvania, or right. Macomb County, Michigan, is worth 25,000 voters in California. Right. So the Democrats really ought to be playing to that crowd, but in their own, the narcissism of primary voters, which is true on both sides, it's a warmer bath to go make San Francisco happier because that's where the center of gravity might be. Or and where a lot of Democratic donors are. So the primaries right. do cut a little against right. An intelligent electoral college strategy for now, but presumably they have months. The incentives are they all have the months to, yeah. to adapt to this. I, I think so. You know who invented the electoral college? Alexander Hamilton. Right. That is the one song that did not make the musical. Yeah. You know, what was I thinking? Well, they had a different, cha, but it really cha, was cha. supposed to be an electoral college right. of well, people, the same theory individuals the Senate, you know, regions, who would yeah. actually select yeah. someone. And so the, now yeah. it's a sort of voting mechanism, which honestly I sort of agree with the left here in some ways. I mean, it's not a particularly intelligent. Vote, if a winner take all by state isn't what you would necessarily right. invent. Well, it was the really... original idea so Boston and New York didn't run the country. Right. You know, and it was part of creating the But also, the if union. you look at the Federalist Papers, it was also about individuals getting together to actually select someone who should be president, which they did understand was a very difficult yeah. and important job. Yeah. And you didn't want to leave that up to just random demagogues going around yeah. yelling at people, which is. Well, you know, what has happened is that the changed quite quickly, of course. The concentration of population. Right. It's happened five times in American history, none in the 20th century. Twice in the 21st, 20, yeah, 2016. The distinction so, between popular and electoral. Yeah, 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 which is why in 16, one reason everybody got it wrong was the formula of the the popular vote will extrapolate to electoral college had almost always been true. Right. There had been really one uh, one uh, uh, eruption of that in over 100 years, which was 2000. And that was a half so, a million. That is, yeah. Gore won the popular vote by half a million. And right, everyone right. thought, I remember this, people were doing rough back of the envelope. Well, right. once you get above a million margin, right, right. That's it can't really, yeah, yeah, it yeah. Can't yeah, really yeah. Get, yeah. get separate. And you, yeah. you would, very few people understood you could go to two and a half million in the, right. electoral, in the popular vote. Right, and that's why everybody lose. got it wrong. The polls right. were right about the popular vote, which right. is what they measured. And the networks are too cheap, or not the networks, the media in general, to do state polling. Right. And the campaign stopped state polling, the Hillary one, and Trump's poll was whatever, you know, some guy named Louie in the back row of the limo told him. You know, right. they made right. it all up. So there was a secret, there's a Republican kind of consultant betting pool in Florida based on Duval County, Jacksonville, which is first to report. And it came back, Trump was a little behind Romney, who had lost, so everybody thought it was over. The Trump guys in Florida and some of the Trump national people were in the thing and they were betting Trump was losing Florida. Hmm. Nobody in the Trump campaign thought he'd win. And part of the reason for that is Trump underperformed Republican normal in the suburbs. Not yes. by a lot, but by a little most right. of the time. But he had these spikes in a few places that we've never seen before. Did better than Reagan in Wilkes-Barre. Twice yeah. Reagan's margin. Yeah. The working class and rural areas. Yeah, that, that it basically a, a electoral riot of sorts. Legitimate, right. he won, he's president. But that is hard to model for because it's very much a black swan. And so will that be recreated? The Democrats will have to help, and they might. Surprises that you would look for, and or moments, or you know, inflection points in 2020. I mean, what do we know is going to happen? We know there'll be conventions of each party. We know there'll be well, we don't know. There may be debates. There have been in right. the last bunch of elections. I think Trump will try a lot of tactics starting after the New Hampshire primary and Iowa caucus because he won't be able to stand the cable TV being about a champion to beat him with crowds. So you will see Trump pull every smoke bomb he can. I keep thinking he's going to fire Pence and start the new reality show, who will the next vice president be? What do you think about that? Oh, I think he'll do it in a minute because he's going to go crazy and he's going to want to change the subject back So you think him. the odds are not trivial that he does I've said Pence. for two years, I, uh, I, I think he's going to try. He needs to bust a big move. In his view as a producer, the other show is getting all the attention. That can't happen. Me, me, me. So I think a lot of Trump erratic stuff. I think he'll be down to dregs. He's already down to dregs, but the dreg factor will get worse. More people will leave the administration. More crazy whims. He will deteriorate even more. I mean, you've got to be tempted to do foreign policy stuff because that you can do more unilaterally than right, right. Congress. Though he has always been all talk and no cruise missiles, which is good. Right, but he could do the opposite. He could do more talk. That is, it could be like, hey, we have a deal with North Korea. We gave away right, everything right, we've always right. insisted on. I got the Iranians denuclearization. and the North Koreans to come to right. my Doral country club, and we solved the whole thing. Right. They have nuclear weapons, They're but nonetheless, a we're, having a, handshake. we're yeah. having a handshake. We're having a handshake. No, think? I, 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 I think, think there's a real tendency. Oh, Nixon to China for the second time. You know, right, total. Yeah. 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 yeah, so I think there'll be plenty of erratic White House behavior. I think more people will bail out. 
or find out who Anonymous is, which won't affect the election, but I'm obsessed with it. I, I have a theory. Should we? Should, uh, I don't want to ruin anybody's career. No, let's go back to Anonymous in one second because I want to hear about that. Yeah. But I would say the other thing people on domestic policy, I think like Nixon, Trump will sell out every, Everybody. Not, not just us type conservatives, yeah. but even his own base. Yeah. We saw this a little bit with this Mexico Canada thing where he took basically all of Pelosi's, all the Democrats' yeah. insistence on, and I have no view on the merits yeah. of this, but on various pro-labor, pro-environmental yeah, yeah. type things. Yeah. He didn't care. Pat Toomey, who actually is a kind of principal free trader, doesn't yeah, like incumbent free trade deals with all this, is now in a state. But I yeah. could see him, if he is impeached but not convicted, it could be just one legislative victory for the Democrats with Trump saying, see, I can get things done. Yeah, you know? yeah. Oh, I'll never forget a big Republican fundraising type came to me during the 2000 campaign, 2016, and said, you know, I just met with Trump, wants me to raise a bunch of money for him. This was a regular Republican, didn't support Trump in the thing, but now, you know, party loyalty, we got our nominee. And so I went to the meeting, and this person said, you know, I told him, I said, some of this rhetoric and everything, Mr. Trump or Donald, you know, and Donald said, oh, that's all, that's the Rube show. You know, I'm just, I'm, I'm just playing the game. I tell those yahoos, they buy it. Can you believe it? You know how many hats they're buying? Yeah. Woo-hoo! Yeah. So yeah, he'll sell anybody out anybody yeah. if he's all transactional yeah. Uh, so yeah I think it'll be a bumpy ride with him in the internet era I'm not sure we won't have a, a couple of independent things right. going on some Bernie type breaks away if it's you know Biden's too corporate or you know something there'll right. be some mischief there um, world's a powder keg uh, what do you think if you got go actually sideways. Sanders a war if it becomes clear and, and it could be as, cl- as early as February 15th more likely, let's say March 3rd, yeah. that either March Sanders or Warren is yeah. likely to be the nominee. Do you think at that point, it does seem like yes. it, there is a possibility there yes. for an inter- independent. I mean, you yeah. got Trump and you got a- It's a nightmare. The distribution system is Coke Pepsi. Very hard to do. You right. and I disagree a little on that. No, no, I totally agree. But it's the hard vacuum to do, will but get It's hard filled. to do, but they, more than usually, there would be yeah. some in- well, that's inst- instinct Bloomberg to try to do Bloomberg last time, his theory was if it's Bernie you know, versus Trump, right. um, holy shit, I'm the independent. Yeah. Uh, you think which someone, would have been a patriotic act. And someone might try to do it again, and that would distort the race some. I'm not sure which way. Yeah. Incidentally. Well, one of the problems is, let, let's just game it out for a minute, and then we can crack the anonymous case. If it happens, ultimately it will go to the Congress, even if, if the third-party wonder candidate gets the plurality, which is very tough ballot access, everything. Then the Republicans and the Democrats have to decide, and I think the Republicans dig in for Trump again. The hostage videos, you know? Yeah, unless he doesn't win the popular vote. I don't well, know. No. You, uh, we keep trying to find a way. I mean, Axelrod gives me crap about this every podcast. I know, I know. Because I think there are three or four Republicans in the Senate who really want to vote for impeachment. Right. But the party loyalty is uh, one of them, one of them, a Trump agnostic, won't tell me what that senator might do, but has publicly been very silent, was like, yeah, they make it pretty clear. You're ostracized, you get a primary, and you never pass a piece of legislation. And half of the stuff I pass here, nobody's ever heard of, but it means a lot to the zipper industry, which has 200,000 employees right. in my state. You get nothing for your state. Uh, I've your, been your state told is they've done. said that your yeah. state is finished. You're yeah. Done. Yeah. yeah. In and terms of just all the discretionary stuff these Yeah, no, no, no. They go declare war spends, on your state. Which is a yeah. lot, right? You know. Yeah. Which is back to the Juan Perón Putin world of politics. Totally. Before we get to anonymous VP, if he dumps Pence, who does he put on? Well, he'll need a food tester, but I think he'll first go to Nikki Haley. Um, I think he'll. I think he'll arrange a show, find some general. So you think if he dumps Pence, it's not like a, the normal, not that it ever really happens, the normal way it could have happened, though it doesn't happen, like when I was Quayle's, uh, Vice President Quayle's chief of staff, which would be last minute at the convention drama. Yeah. John, you it, guys might have been thinking about that. It, what, oh, it came closer than people realized, but yeah, that's yeah, another yeah. conversation. But, yeah. but what... Um, but with him, he'd want the two-month drama, Yeah, right? no, he says, uh, Mike Pence has told me he wants to go back to Indiana. What a great job. We're or he wants to be Secretary of State or something. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike, Mike, Mike Pence to the Amtrak. He's going to do a hell of a job. <laughs> and then we orchestrate the search for a new vice president, you know, confetti, spotlights. And he teases it out. And it'll be a general. It'll be a TV celebrity like him. It'll be Nikki Haley. Because the way, you know, Queens 1958, Trump's like, hey, the broads hate me. Get abroad. Yeah. I solved it. Genius. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and so now, now Nikki, who is the most ambitious and ruthless Paul, I think, in the Republican Party, how she plays that. Does she go along or does she play for later? She's running now. You know, she's signing prospect mail for everybody. But anyway, that's her set of calculations. And, you know, she and Satan will get together and work that out. But 
it'll be a show, and I think his instinct, if she behaves, will be to land on her. But I think he won't want, yeah, the Democrats to just dominate everything in February, March, April. Yeah. So you're He'll right. He'll want to coverage. do something. When he sees Buttigieg or Biden or Warren with 3,000 cheering people in a big rally, dump Trump down the building shaking. Headlines. On every channel. Well, on headlines on every channel. Yeah. So X wins New Hampshire. Trump in trouble. Yeah. 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 Or, yeah or just, you know what the just, Dems ought to do, by the way? I'm surprised. I've been, I pitched this to some Dem types four years ago. Get a plane. Bump Tom Perez. Don't any more speeches from Tom. Get five or He's six. He's the DNC chairman. We should tell our yeah, viewers. Yeah, bloody like, haven't every noticed. Debate. You ever haven't watch noticed the, that? You ever watch the C-SPAN feed? You got to sit through an hour of local officials and Tom before the debate. Like, yeah, yeah, world's worst know. warm-up comedy. <laughs> but get some good comedians with followings and go on a road show all about Trump. Follow him and stream it on TV. It'll drive him crazy. That's a good idea. Can't stand being laughed at. The you know, Obama. Having some good jokes on at his expense at Gridiron is what put us into this national nightmare. Yeah, with the White House Correspondents Dinner. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. The, I'm sorry, One of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trump's smoldering there. Nobody's made fun of me like that since my f- f- father. They should take more of our advice, but anyway, they don't. Oh, Democrats, well, we're, Democrats, we're, we're here in the ornate, we're discredited, no we're discredited studio. We're yeah. Trump types. Okay, yeah. tell me about Anonymous here for a minute before we, before well, we, we, we go we, off. Well, we, you know, I, I used to obsess on Deep Throat. I was wrong about that. Len Garman wrote a great book about it. So I skimmed the book. And it, it, I, there were like three kind of tells in it, I think. Tell one is this person was very literate with history, uh, even historical quotes. Made me think speechwriter. You know, as de Gaulle once said, you know, yeah, right. uh, well-educated, not a comms hack, uh, but somebody who is around policy and maybe policy communications. Somebody who had a teacher when they were in high school who fought in the war. I think he meant World War II or she when they wrote it, which would mean older. And then finally there is a note about this Haley stuff saying the view in the building was she would solve the woman problem in the GOP, which shows how dumb a lot of the GOP is about women. That is not the statement of the usual kind of chowderhead GOP dude. So I thought maybe a woman. Hmm. And so I put them all together and I came and a principal conservative, somebody who was around the Reagan era. Uh, somebody who's keeping the job maybe for a reason. Maybe they're not wealthy. And so it's a painful decision to quit. So I came around, and I'm thinking of a senior person who's a little older in the speech writing world who is thoughtful, good writer, knows history, and knows the conservative movement, and might have had a teacher who fought in the Second World War. I think you know who I mean. Yeah. So that's I think we should say, we shouldn't say. Uh, I don't want to hurt no, that. We don't want to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There are other people I've heard speculation about, which would also be consistent with Interest in national security. Not a woman, though. That's the, the yeah. I don't. I don't have work. a woman either. No. That have, one doesn't. I have quit. someone who's in the national security side, who's been a journalist and therefore would know how to write this kind of book and well educated, cares mm-hmm. a lot of, you know, knows history some, knows my conservative principles. Right. Yeah, I tend to agree. It doesn't feel like just a kind of twenty-eight year old, you know. No. Uh, and it's the kind of senior conservatoid type that the young staffer even though they may not be that high ranking, would come to and say, what do you think? You've been around. You've worked in other yeah. places. Yeah. Yeah. So well, we'll there you get, go. We'll have to, you should write this up, though. You know, yeah, and, we, uh, I just don't want to, I, 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 I hate to, you know, because I'm an apostate, so I don't want to hurt anybody. Yeah. But we'll come back. We'll come back, and or we'll we can back. ask the universe here. Yeah, I'm glad you have this. You were enraptured with that rap, with that app. So we'll come back in. What, what do you think? We'll come back when someone has a Democratic nomination or is about to have it. And yeah. really discuss what we've Dude, gotten general wrong, election what, what happened. You know, April. But yeah. final point, I guess, you're, for me, my takeaway for the viewers, and I, you're more pro at this than I, so I'm sort of a, a viewer myself in this, is, you know, there's this huge warm-up, and which guys gone out through all of 20, you know, for what, May, March, April, basically, 2019 to now. Uh, we'll continue to go on for the next month or so. And then there's reality, and it really happens fast, and people forget how fast it just sort people who were plausible 20% chances to get the nomination become 1% yeah. in a week, right yeah. after Iowa and New Hampshire are just gonna so be big. And I guess, days and it seems to me your basic point is it could be that Iowa and New Hampshire are muddle and four or five are still in and we go to March 3rd and even then it could be a muddle, I guess. Well, let me just ask you one one. I think there are the big three are in you, Bloomberg. Are you, uh-huh, out at, of after, Iowa. by out March, of Iowa. out of Iowa, yeah, yeah. or out of New Hampshire at least. Maybe, it depends how close New Hampshire is. Could be two then, but probably three. So you do buy the, so that, that week of February, whatever it is, February 3rd and 10th or 2nd, and I can't, whatever that 
uh, I guess it's eight days, so third and eleventh, right. maybe whatever that week is of Iowa or eight days of Iowa, New Hampshire. You think are huge, huge, and people I would just say start look, paying attention very seriously in mid late January. Yeah, I would say look at it this way: thirty days of January, leading up to the crescendo. 30 days of February, where there are going to be winners and losers and fatalities and twists and turns in extremely high states. And then March 3rd is going to, it could go on because they have proportional delegates, but we're going to know a lot on March 4th. A lot. And do you still believe, we talked about this a year ago, I think that you thought there was some non trivial chance that because of the proportionality and because they're fairly evenly balanced candidates in this race right now, yeah. that you don't get a, that you do have two or three go on. You have three more than two, since if it's two, it does, you get a winner. Yeah. But yeah. you have three or four go if on. Biden has a weird comeback from Iowa, where if he's third in Iowa and second in New Hampshire, and he's up. great, and then he implodes in the middle of uh, February, and then it's mixed uh, in March. You know, you can see a way. Remember, they have proportional delegates. So third place can you can get some delegates with some, a threshold yeah. so you don't get so it's hard but yeah it's really top two but the top two can go on forever yeah and you could end up at a convention you could end up being slightly yeah. someone could be unlikely shy of, i'd bet shy against of 50. it but it is not impossible at all a contested convention I th- on the novelistic front where you had buddha judge winning yeah. as the kind of correct literary s- yeah. uh, solution so to speak Opposite to the trump to problem trump, yeah. i'd say a contested convention would be a pretty Good literary gimmick to have a, a, yeah. to, to culminate the insanity of the Trump years. The first well, you know who's convention your second act since star. 19 since nineteen forty. I guess it would be. Is that right? Fifty two, sort of. Yeah. The convinced the convention after a ballot or two becomes about the head of the teachers union and the head of AFSCME because they've got like half the delegates, the bodies. Once they're liberated from vo- yeah, having yeah. to vote for wins the primary, down. that would be yeah. something else. Who would yeah. win a contested convention among the Democrats? I'm sure Hillary, Kerry, they all think. They got to come back to the My person, charm. person yeah, yeah, who's been yeah. there before, you know. But of course, it oh, could go the absolute yeah. opposite way, right? We were always worried back back in '96 with Dole. A lot of our delegates were Pat Robertson people because yeah, they, they would win the the caucuses to pick the body that was instructed by the primary. Right. So we always thought of the convention of the living dead on the third ballot. They all like turn over <laughs> and the Roberts now the Dole signs go to the floor. Um, so. Yes, but maybe the, it, we're do it. We're do a special no ferns uh, crystal conversation from there. If yeah, it that will be something. Right. Where would that be? Charlotte and August. But we should we'll get together before then and do one after yeah. we see what happens in the see how first wrong we were. See how wrong we were. So what Patrick happens March third? That's yeah. right. That'd be huge. Yep. Mike Murphy, thanks very thank much you. for joining, I love doing it. joining me today, and thank you for joining us on Conversations.